Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 23. In this tutorial we are going to take this scene right here and we're going to start making it look visually more impressive, much like we did with our first scene that we actually started constructing uh, at the beginning of this series. Don't forget click on that subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with everything I upload on video game development and indeed this Grand Theft Auto series on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So... Making this scene look uh, much more visually impressive is going to be a lot tougher than it was with our previous scene. The reason I say that is because the previous scene, we were restricted in what the player could see, and it was a very enclosed environment. This is a big, or it's rather, it's going to be a big, huge open environment. And that means we're going to have to make some changes to our post-processing. If you remember, we went through all the post processes again, and I'm, I'm not going to repeat all of that once again. But there are some things that I'm going to go through and tell you why we do need to change it and have it different in this scene. So, first and foremost, I think we need to assess the sky and change it from just the plain skybox to a different one and we already have skyboxes because we got them quite a while ago but if you want to you can head to the asset store and search for a different type of skybox again it is entirely up to you rather than waste time though i'm going to use a skybox we already have however i may need to change it depending on how our post processing turns out in this tutorial so Let's go to uh, Window, let's go to Rendering, and let's go to Light Settings. Now, the reason we're doing this now instead of later on is because, simply, it's always good to take a little break from all the intense stuff. We've been doing some AI lately, and I think it's great to take a break from that and create something else just for now. During that time, we can, you know, give ourselves a bit of a, a mental break and then get straight back into it, which we are going to do anyway next tutorial, but I'll talk more about that later so skybox let's change the uh material of it so if i type in sky we have a couple of different options uh not quite sure which one i'm going to use right now but i may take a look in the folder it was sky freebie wasn't it so let's have casual day should we i'm going to select casual day obviously it's entirely up to you but this is where this scene will now start looking different because of what we select in here. Uh, sun source, so I'm going to have that uh, as the directional light. There we go. So we just drag and drop that onto there. It's not going to make too much of a difference now, but later on in development it will. We'll, we'll see how later on, because you, you'll you see the effects anyway. So let's go to our camera, uh, which follows our player, as we know. And let's attach that post-processing to it. So if we go to our post-processing folder and runtime, and let's add that post-processing runtime script to the camera. Now, I am going to add the original post-processing profile here, and then we should be able to see some kind of difference in the scene once we go up here and... Oh, it's already activated, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do is use that profile now and duplicate it okay so once we've duplicated it i'm going to rename it and have it open world and i'm going to reattach that to the camera over here and i'm going to press play for now and just see how our scene looks in the current shape it's in so we should be able to see the camera panning down see now it just doesn't quite look how we'd want it to so we're going to have to change a couple of things here so we need to set our camp so let me search for camera and it's is it this one 
I think it's this one, isn't it? That main camera. So we're going to have to attach... Yes, so we're going to have to attach it there as well. So let's bring our post-processing script onto the main camera. And do we have it on here as well? I think we do, actually. Yeah, I don't think we actually need it on there. It's all right. I'm just trying to remember. I have not actually done this for a while. <laughs> We actually have two versions, don't we? Because one is a fake one and the other one is the real one. It's this real one that we need to have the script on. And let's bring the profile onto there. And I'm going to press play once again. Just to check everything does look in order. And we are running around with that post-processing profile. Because I'm going to edit it real time while we are in the game now. I'm not going to edit it in scene view. The game is going to be running and we're going to edit it here and now. So we can see firstly it does look a little bit bright. It looks too bright. So let's start by changing down here. In fact, let me close everything up just so we can see it a little bit better. So I'm thinking the grain. The grain is a little bit too intense, so I'm going to still have some, but I'm going to just ever so slightly, just to add that little extra effect. Okay, next I'm going to adjust the color grading. I think it is far too much. So let's reduce the post exposure to maybe two. Mm. Not convinced about that. Maybe, maybe keep it as three, but let's bring the contrast down a touch and the saturation. Ah, cool. <laughs> and the saturation about there. Next, I'm going to change the bloom. I think bloom, uh, I, I am a fan of bloom, don't get me wrong, but in cases like this, it is too much. If we were to change the bloom intensity right down, we can see just how much of an impact it does have. Now, we do want some bloom, but obviously not too much. So I'm going to have it 1.5 for now. And obviously, you can work with this uh, in, in a different kind of way. Radius, we can reduce. And softness, reduce ever so slightly. Oh, is our NPC having a good wander around. Okay, next. You could, if you wanted to, add some eye adaptation. I guess it depends how you want your game to look. Uh, I'm going to miss it out for now. Motion blur, I'm going to keep as it is. Screen space reflection. We're not going to really use this right now, but we will in the future. Ambient occlusion. I want to reduce the ambient occlusion to probably about three. And let's change the radius to about two. Maybe three, actually. And I'm going to have the sample count as high. So it looks a little less uh, kind of blocky, as it were. So now we're at the stage where it looks a little bit too dark in places like this. So we need to now work with the um, color grading just a little bit. To get a little bit more light in here. I'm going to reduce the temperature ever so slightly. Maybe re-increase the saturation and contrast. Or rather decrease, I should say. Just a little bit. And I'm going to add a touch more bloom on the intensity. How much? Yeah. So just a touch more bloom. But I think the ambient occlusion, if we bring it down to about there, I think. Okay, so far we're doing okay. Looking, I think it's looking a little bit better. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to stop the scene there and I'm going to go to the window, rendering and light settings again. And now if I reduce the intensity multiplier and press play now, we're going to see a bit of a difference in the game itself. So one thing we're going to have to keep note of and just kind of remind ourselves here is we are going to have to change to day and night at some point. So we just need to be mindful of how much light we're using in our scene. So I'm going to increase this just slightly. 
to about there. That should do. Maybe a little bit less, I'm thinking. Okay, well, it's starting to look a bit different. I think the key here is you'll need to take a lot of time in refining this section. Uh, just as one last little thing, I am going to change the skybox from casual day to... Let's change it to something else, and we'll see how much of an impact it does have. So let's have that one. Let's increase it to 0.5 and press play. The skybox really does make a difference, but like I say, we're going to deal with that kind of stuff later on anyway, once we get really into day and night cycles. So the, the whole idea of this video was to kind of bring in different visuals of the game rather than stick to what we're doing. And now we're kind of like in a sunset sort of environment, I guess. Which isn't too bad. So, what I need you guys to do at this point is really work with your post-processing profile uh, and probably the skybox as well. Um, it's going to take quite a bit of time for you to perfect this. Do the best you can, and if you need to know anything, speak up in the comments because we will obviously be dealing with that kind of stuff uh, because there, there's so much to do, so much to create here, and... You've got to remember that it takes time to create these things. You can't just create a profile and expect it to work within what, how long I've been going about 11 minutes. It just does not work that way. So you will need to refine it using a couple of different things here. So before we end this tutorial, I would like to bring in uh, the next NPC um, because we're not quite done with this tutorial yet. Uh, let's go to our NPC folder and I'm going to bring in... I've put it in the wrong folder. I've actually put it in number 24. There we go. So I want to bring in this NPC before we ended, um, just basically because I don't want you guys to think that this tutorial is a complete waste, because it really wasn't. I was hoping I could inform you guys the best course of action for um, post-processing on an open world, because it is different from the closed environment. So uh, let's click on Fix Now. And... All I've got here, this uh, NPC is just from Mixamo. It is a lady and uh, just the textures. Now, the actual animations we have from Malcolm will work on Stephanie as well. So we don't need to worry about getting extra animations for this NPC. Um, I'm going to just quickly bring her in. And she's a bit of a, a big girl. She's taller. But let's reduce the size. So if you want the same one as what I have, just head to Mixamo when you know we've been there before, and you can get this model uh, the same way that we got Malcolm. And we'll be dealing with her in the next tutorial. So next tutorial, I want to add a bit more variation to our NPCs. Uh, we're going to get her wandering around um, separate to him, so they'll have their own paths to walk around. And we want to get our city ready for when we bring in the cars and eventually we're going to move on to stuff well pretty soon we're going to move on to uh, aiming our gun and when we aim our gun these npcs are going to get a bit terrified they're going to cower say don't shoot me don't shoot me and then we're going to move on to actually being able to unfortunately end them <laughs> to put it nicely so guys until that next tutorial just focus on cr making that post processing profile look awesome for this game that is your homework, basically. It's going to take you a bit of time to really perfect that. But uh, I do have other tutorials on post-processing, so you might need to just quickly reference them as well. So, guys, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.